So today what we are going to discuss is networking using LinkedIn and discussing some best practices. So who am I? My name is Heather Spiegel. I'm the founder of Hidden Squirrel Consulting, and I've been recruiting executives within a variety of industries for the past eight years. And I'm also a career coach. So I work with my clients throughout the entire job search process from gaining clarity around preparing your goals and aspirations to share with others all the way through to offer negotiation. And so why is networking important? Well, networking is important for a variety of reasons, but I imagine that a number of you are here today because you're looking to advance your career and to potentially land a new role. And, and networking is so crucially important to this because only 7% of people actually land a new role by applying to a job ad without a referral. So in terms of success, applying to job ads isn't exactly the most fruitful strategy or your best return on effort or return on investment. So really want you to start thinking about how you can build and leverage your networks in order to gain access to the hidden job market. And so the hidden job market is essentially all of the roles out there that are not advertised formally. And a lot of the time we only gain access to them by networking. So before we start specifically about LinkedIn, you really want to think about how you can leverage your existing network, both in terms of friends and family and past colleagues, but also in terms of acquaintances or people who you're not necessarily close to. And you really want to ensure that your network understands the types of connections that you're seeking and the types of roles that you're interested in. Again, this is very much tailored to searching for a new role, but networking on the whole is something that we're going to get into in terms of LinkedIn and those best practices. And so industry specific groups are also really important in terms of being able to build your network. And of course, LinkedIn. So I would argue that LinkedIn is probably the most important social media platform for advancing your career. There's over 690 million LinkedIn users. And of course, 95% of recruiters like myself turn to LinkedIn to find candidates. So it's really important that if nothing else, after today's session, you ensure that you do have a LinkedIn profile. And so today, we're of course gonna talk about using LinkedIn to network. And so before we get into the nitty gritty around best practices, you really want to ensure that you have a fully updated LinkedIn profile because you're going to place higher in the search results when someone like a hiring manager or a recruiter is looking for someone like you. And you're also gonna get access to 40 times more opportunities these are stats directly from LinkedIn. And even as simple as adding a professional looking photo can get you up to nine times more connection requests. And when we are networking, unlike with a resume, people want to see your face. So ensure that you do have that professional looking photo on your LinkedIn profile. And so today we're gonna to talk about active strategies in terms of networking, but even in terms of passive strategies, you want to ensure that your LinkedIn profile looks professional, it's complete, and then that way when people are looking for others like you, they'll be enticed to reach out. And so if you email me after today's session, I will send you my LinkedIn checklist on how to optimize your profile and all of the things to keep in mind. Okay. So in order to maximize the potential of LinkedIn, the first thing beyond having a fully complete profile is really building out your network. So ensure that you have over 500 connections because LinkedIn is going to reward you, particularly in terms of appearing in search results, if you have a broader network. And one way to passively or continuously build up your network is to always include your LinkedIn URL in your email signature and on your resume. When you are active on LinkedIn, 
you really want to also ensure that you're continuously engaging with your connections content, things that they're posting, things that they're liking. Adding those comments that provide a unique perspective are really key in terms of building those connections. And my number one pet peeve is when people send outreach requests and they don't personalize the messaging. So really ensure that when you are reaching out to someone that you do want to connect with, that you are customizing the message, that you're mentioning something about their background that piques your interest or that is interesting to you. And one way to do this is to look specifically at their activity history on LinkedIn. And then beyond that, you also want to post and share unique content. There is a tremendous opportunity on LinkedIn right now to establish yourself as a subject matter expert. Very few people do post on LinkedIn regularly. So that is another thing that I would recommend. And this way, people will reach out to you to network and build those connections. So something to keep in mind. Now getting on to those best practices. If there's nothing else, I really want you to walk away noting that networking is not the equivalent of asking for favors. It's about establishing new relationships and also going into conversations thinking, how can this be a win-win? Even if you are looking to advance your job search, there's always something that you could potentially provide to the person that you're reaching out to, whether it's a connection, facilitating an introduction, providing a unique perspective, or even providing a book recommendation. There is always something that you can do. So number one is we wanna think about how we can provide value. Number two is we wanna establish relationships, particularly if you want to eventually ask for something, you wanna take just the time to establish rapport and really get to know someone. So that is something to, to keep in mind. And then finally, to be consistent with your outreach. In an ideal world, we would be networking continuously all of the time. And people who rise up within their careers tend to be people who really prioritize networking. And they also prioritize facilitating connections in their network. So that is something to consider as well. And again, when we are reaching out to people, there are four things that we can do to really optimize the chances that they're going to speak with us and that we're going to have a really fruitful connection. So number one, if you can get a referral into someone, you are golden. Referrals are so important. And even if you can't get that warm connection or that facilitated introduction, you can always open up a message by referencing your common connections or referencing something that ties you together or that shows that you've taken the time to get to know them and that you've also done your homework. So before reaching out to people, definitely take the time to learn more about them and about their organizations. You can reference articles that they've published or posted, interviews that they've given, recent press releases. All of those are really great starting points. And then the third thing is really articulating your clear ask. What is it that you want from this connection? Is it that you would like a 15 minute phone call? In non-COVID times, would you love a coffee date or a, a coffee meeting? Um, or is it that you'd like an introduction to a key decision maker? So always be really clear. And then going back to the previous point, demonstrate value. When you do connect with somebody new, really take the time to listen and understand their pain points and challenges, and also be able to speak to how you can address these challenges, or at least can relate to them. And again, if you can provide that value added perspective or an introduction, those are also great things. So I know a number of you are either seeking your first role or you're changing industries or looking to gain Canadian work experience. 
And one aspect of networking that I find is continually underutilized is the information interview. And so an informational interview is not when we're trying to essentially get someone to give us a job, but we're trying to learn from their experience and to tap their advice and their insight as we navigate this journey. And so informational interviews are wonderful in terms of gaining industry intelligence and a great way to learn from others. And so ideally you wanna target somebody who's at your level in a role that you'd like to have or one level above. And so I realize that this is still pretty high level. So I'm going to now show you an informational interview outreach template that I've put together. And this draws upon some of the key themes that we've already talked about. So hi, so and so, you want to start by inserting that common connection or area of mutual interest and also acknowledging something about their background or experience that shows that you did your homework, that you're not just blasting out emails, but you're taking the time to really understand who they are and to personalize that message. You also want to insert a statement about who you are and essentially the reason for why you're reaching out. In this example, I would love to connect and hear more about your experience with X topic of interest. And then our clear ask, do you have time for a 15 minute call next week? So these are all of the major components that I would recommend including in an outreach message if you are seeking an informational interview. But again, I do encourage you to customize the message so that you're speaking with your authentic voice. So there are two ways that we can get acquainted, so to speak, with people on LinkedIn. And one that isn't traditionally utilized is the follow button. So if there's someone that you would love to establish a connection with, but you question whether they would accept your connection request, let's say an executive high up in an organization of interest, what you can do initially is follow them. By following someone on LinkedIn, you're not asking for their request or their permission to follow them. You can follow anybody. And this way you'll be able to see their activity history as they're posting. It will appear in your feed. So in this case, if James is someone I follow in my LinkedIn feed, I'm going to see the articles that he's posting. I'm going to see the things he's commenting on. And then that gives me the ability to also like and comment on the same things. And so I can foster a dialogue more organically. And then over time, after we've sort of become acquainted just through this sort of forum, I can reach out and send a formal connection request and then ask specifically to connect. And so if you are here today because you're thinking about networking to secure your next role, I really do encourage you to take a strategic approach to it. And one thing that I do with my clients, either one-on-one -on -one or in group sessions that I run, is really thinking about how can you build your list of key contacts? So in this case, if we were seeking a marketing director role in consumer packaged goods, I would wanna write down all of the organizations of interest, and then I would start mapping out the key individuals within those organizations. And so even on days when I don't wanna reach out to people, I can still engage in this activity of mapping and also noting any shared connections. So that way, when I am ready to network, I can easily go back and say, I wanna reach out to Michael because he's the general manager, he's likely the key decision maker, and I have seven shared connections. So first of all, I'm gonna see if someone would be willing to introduce me. Because remember, any sort of referral is gold, particularly when you are seeking to land a new role. And so just to sort of recap a little bit of what we've discussed here today, you very much want to be purposeful with your networking and you want to take a personalized approach. So always personalizing any connection 
requests, any outreach messages. And before you ask for something, really go into the conversation thinking, how can this be a win-win? And how can I turn this into a relationship rather than something that's just transactional? How can I foster rapport? How can I build that connection? And also, how can I add value, even if it's in a very small way? And so what I think that you can do today is number one, establish a LinkedIn profile if you don't already have one. Network with your existing connections. Don't be afraid to request informational interviews. They are so, so helpful. And also map out organizations of interest and those key contacts within. And finally, once you get comfortable networking with people who are at your level or maybe one level above you, start reaching out to key decision makers and taking a proactive approach, also demonstrating how you can really address their pain points and that you understand the key challenges that they're trying to solve. And finally, you can always work with a career coach who can be very helpful in sort of guiding you through this process. And so personally, as I mentioned at the beginning, I work as an executive recruiter and a career coach. I guide my clients through the entire process from getting clarity around their career objectives all the way through to things like LinkedIn profile optimization, creating a robust job search strategy, preparing for interviews, and of course, negotiating that offer. And I will mention that I am going to be running a virtual career camp program next month. So in a group environment, we go through all of this, plus more, including nine hours of content. So if you would be interested in learning more, send me an email, and don't forget to send me an email to reach out and get the free LinkedIn optimization checklist. Okay, so does anybody have any questions that I can answer for you? Let me see here. What should an applicant be prepared for in an informational interview? You should be prepared for a list of questions that you think would be helpful in terms of understanding the person you're chatting with, as well as how it can advance your job search. So if you're exploring an industry, how can you find out more about that industry to gauge whether it would actually be a good fit for you? You can ask things like, what does your day-to-day -day role look like? What are some of the key challenges you're facing? What are some of the opportunities here to really be able to apply X, Y, or Z skill set? You know, whatever it is that you're looking to do. If contacts you're reaching out to on LinkedIn are unresponsive, don't be afraid to follow up at least once or twice. People are very busy, and oftentimes it's not that they don't want to connect with you, it's just that it's fallen off the radar. But when you do follow up, make sure that that message is personalized so that they know that you aren't just blasting out emails. If you're new to Canada, you can always look on LinkedIn using the advanced search filter to look for people like you. So look for people with the title that you want and maybe type in a university that you're, inter you're aware of in your old country or any sort of keywords that would essentially draw contacts from other places who have recently relocated. Reach out to them, ask to learn more about their experience. Would you suggest purchasing LinkedIn Premium? I definitely think it is worthwhile, even if you only do it for a couple of months, if you're gonna be really focused on networking, because LinkedIn Premium allows you to message people before sending them a connection request. Sometimes people are a lot more responsive to just answering messages, as opposed to looking to see who has sent them specific connection requests.
I'm just seeing if there were any other questions here. How can you build LinkedIn connections when you're a student? This is an ideal situation, actually. So engage in those informational interviews. Reach out to people who are in the field that you're targeting and ask them for 15 minutes of their time. Ask to learn more about their journey, how they landed a particular role. And if they have any particular advice that they could offer you as someone who is looking to break into the field. People want to help especially if you're not asking for someone, asking for a role directly from someone, you're just asking to learn about their journey or to hear their advice, people tend to be really responsive to that. What do I think of Indeed? Um, again, I really think that you shouldn't, if you were looking at your time, I think that in an ideal world, you would be spending 80% of your time networking and only 20% of your time applying to job ads. That being said, if you do see a job that's posted that looks perfect for you, see if you can find out who the hiring manager is. And even better than that, see if you can get a referral into that hiring manager. Even if you can't, just taking the time to do the legwork to try to figure out who the role reports to and reaching out directly to that person can put you, you know, heads above the other candidates. So LinkedIn uh, indeed can be an important resource to finding roles, but it shouldn't be your only Hi, resource. Hi, Heather. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Hello, Heather, can you hear me? And unfortunately, I can't hear you, Alex. I'm, I'm sorry sure. that I'm having um, technical issues, but it was uh, a pleasure being fine. here today. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else in chat can hear me. Um, you all can you reach out to me at heather at hiddensquirrel.net if you would like to receive more information or get that LinkedIn checklist. OK, so you can hear me and Heather, OK. Um, so I just wanted to come on and say thank you, Heather. And again, I'm sorry that you can't hear me right now. Um, but for everyone just watching the session, just to let you know that our next session is about to begin in two minutes. So that's uh, Sweta Regni, or sorry, Sweta Regni. Um, and so that'll begin at 3.10. Um, and again, sorry about the check, uh, the audio issue. Thank you again, Heather. I'm sorry that you can't hear me. <laughs> So you can hear me if you have any further questions, if we didn't cover anything that uh, you were hoping for, I am still here. I'll still be here for another five minutes. So happy to answer any further questions that you may have. Uh, how long should you wait for a reply? Good question, John. I think waiting a week is good. Uh, and then at that point, you can follow up. And you can also recognize that we're in the midst of a pandemic and life is really hectic. So you can understand if your message got buried beneath the pile. But you would love to, to connect and, and set up a time to briefly speak. So I think at a minimum, one outreach or I should say one follow-up is always a good idea. So many people assume if they don't get a reply, it's because someone is intentionally ignoring them, and often that is not the case. I would say 
I've seen some people recommend three follow-ups. I think two, so three outreach requests at a max. If someone's not getting back to you by the second or the third outreach message, it's unfortunate, but for whatever reason, they're not interested in chatting. Do companies give false positives? Your resume is with the hiring manager. That is a good question. Um, I can't really speak for all organizations. I know that some will generally give that sort of statement. Um, and, and sometimes recruiters won't necessarily get back to you. It is my personal opinion, if you have a video or an in-person interview with someone, you should always hear back in a prompt manner. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. But also don't be afraid to follow up after an interview as well, particularly if they give you a timeline for a response and you haven't heard anything. Okay, are there any other questions? Otherwise, bring this to a close. And you guys can feel free to reach out to me after the fact as well. Okay, it was lovely being here today. Uh, I hope that was helpful and look forward to being in touch in the